a professor of information systems at Clarkson University. I'm feeling a very strong Canadian vibe in this room. <laughs> I am, I am, just my school is 10 miles from Canadian border. We're like a <laughs> southernmost, we're the southernmost suburb of Ottawa, I would say. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going to echo very much similar themes as, as Richard mentioned in terms of that uh, I really feel if you want to play analytics education game, it has to be an interdisciplinary effort. Uh, this, this is not, and I've seen it, I mean, I, we did a lot of research when we started ours. We were actually wrote up several papers on benchmarking against industry and education in the process of this. And this is not an opportunity for people to recycle their master's in statistics or master in optimization or master in computer science programs and put a new tag on them. So, um, we, we really, one advantage of being a relatively small research university is that we're in a small town, everybody knows each other, kids go to school with each other, so we can't be enemies. We have to be collegial and friendly. So we said, there were seven of us in a room, two software engineers, two computer engineers, some math, statistics, and I was representing business, and there was, a, there was an econometrician in the room. And we started initially just discussing what is analytics? What, what does that mean? And it's just amazing how everybody thinks what they teach is the single most important thing in the world, and that is what <laughs> analytics is. So, for example, uh, you know, what I took for granted should be in this program, people would question. For example, I teach database, and I said SQL should be part of analytics. And I said, oh, no, that's for minions. Sensors are the most important things. And I'm thinking, well, sensors are for minions. So, we, we really had so many, like it was such an eye opener to sit in the room with people from different perspectives to kind of see that uh, it truly needs an interdisciplinary approach. So what we did, you know, we kind of left all our agendas in the rooms. We spent a month meeting almost every other day during the lunch break. Our deans were nice enough to sponsor lunches for us as an added incentive, free food. So we, we kind of, started with a certain framework. And you know, if you think of uh, statistics as a skill, and what we teach in the first statistics course is we give students data, we give them a question, and we, go, we, we make them go through paces to learn how to confirm or reject a hypothesis. Then in the second statistics course, you know, like, okay, now start doing some design of experiments, but you're still kind of learning the mechanics of going from data to question to inference. And then, you know, we kind of evolved to the point, to be a data scientist, you know, a unicorn is a term that's being mentioned, it would be somebody who would know how to wrangle all the data from the structured and unstructured sources, would be able to come with great questions and then, you know, use their statistical prowess and learning the most, uh, most sophisticated machine learning and data mining techniques to, to come up with nuggets of gold. Now, obviously, you know, there's very few individuals. I was at a conference where they found on LinkedIn, there's one profile on LinkedIn that, you know, I don't remember the name, but they, they virtually called him John L. Unicorn, a person who would, who would kind of comprise all those skills. So we decided that um, we should develop a pedagogy to deliver a common set of analytic skills at an introductory to medium level. So we came up with a set of foundation skills and most, prom most common professional skills, and it really echoes, I mean, uh, you, you flashed your slide for like a second, but you know, if you really do analysis of what marketplace is asking from, you know, all lines of businesses, from banks, pharmaceuticals, telecommunications, everybody who deals and has historically been able to collect large amounts of data to those new ones that are now, as what recordable event is changing, are able to do, we really, you know, you will kind of come to the point of finding kind of a semblance of, of a framework that captures, let's say, 80% of the most common skills that industry requires. So what, what we decided to do is, this is what I do to my students when I talk about analytics. I throw a slide with, you know, and this is less than 10% of new, old, and super new companies. I tell them many of these companies are A, from Palo Alto, B, 
are not more than five years old, C, have less than 1,000 employers, and D, have market capitalization of more than a billion dollars. We are in a bubble. I mean, it was like a car industry in 1905. We don't know which three car makers are going to survive. But what we do is, if you have a framework, you can start thinking, oh, well, this was supposed to be a fancy animation. This is supposed to kind of all kind of uh, cluster into the uh, certain groups where you can say, look, if you have a framework and if you are able to um, kind of think strategically, and again, we had 10 people in a room, so everybody brought their point of view, you can see how all these technologies do fit certain aspects of curriculum. So we started, we, uh, we are started, we, our first cohort is going on right now, but what happened was a very interesting thing. This is a 33 credit program, and it's called Masters of Science in Interdisciplinary Analytics. And it's small. We started with about a dozen people. But it turns out that more than half, and I think that's going to be our dual masters. So we have masters in engineering, dual with analytics. MBA, dual with analytics. Uh, sciences, biology, dual with analytics. And what we're doing, I've, I've been sending a lot of love letters to New York State Education Department is to codify this and to get permission to run almost every graduate degree that we offer as a dual degree with analytics, where you get your core of the meat and potato skills, so to speak, and you build on top of it your, uh, your examples in, in natural sciences, in medicine, in uh, business, in engineering, and so on and so forth. Now, we also have, so basically our core, and th that it was quite a political thing to decide what's in the core or not. Um, there's very few people, and this is a massive degree, who have an undergrad and have taken a database course, a probability course, and uh, some kind of programming course all at once. So computer scientists typically don't have much statistical probability. Uh, uh, math majors, will have some of that, but typically don't have in-depth database. So you can opt out of certain core courses if you have it, but we, are, we want everybody. So if you are a music major, undergraduate, we will bring you to a certain level with these core courses. And then you can take uh, these additional courses, um, and then you can add, these are some, just some suggested courses, but this is how we started then evolving into, look, if somebody wants to do analytics in political science or in in environmental engineering, then we can start sharing these electives and kind of, you know, that's how we evolved to this dual master's concept, which becomes like a 50 degree approximately with some shared electives. So um, we started, we are doing it right now with the, with the first group. And the most important thing is that we really had support from all deans of all the schools involved. And we are allowed to come up with curriculum internally without pressure from one department versus the other to make this more statistics oriented or more programming oriented or more computer science oriented degree. And so far so good. I mean, we started with the first year. We'll see, you know, uh, whether this collegiality and, and uh, spirit of cooperation continues. But the important thing is that I, you know, they, they, I report directly to provost. I don't report to any of the deans, so we get some political cover in doing this in a truly interdisciplinary level. Yeah. So um, that's really it. And then, you know, as I said, there was supposed to be some fancy animation, but that's okay. You can watch it on my laptop after the class.